the Q4 earnings call is coming up in two days. And I think a really good way to start thinking about what's going to happen in the Q4 earnings call is looking at the Q3 earnings report and maybe talking about the Q3 earnings call. Before I get started, I just want to mention this is the Daily Lie. This is a channel where I talk somewhat about Tesla, I talk somewhat about politics. It is a censorship, mostly free channel, unlike YouTube or platform, unlike YouTube, unlike Patreon. I can speak freely. I don't worry about whether, and I had a significant history of being censored on YouTube in the past. And Patreon is a history of censoring people for things they don't even do on the Patreon platform. If you are a supporter of The Daily Lie, you can comment in the chat and you can comment on posts and supporters get additional content like early access to a lot of my YouTube videos. I'm still publishing videos on YouTube. I still appreciate my supporters on Patreon. But for now, I'm here. I'm really enjoying the Locals platform and I hope you'll consider number one. If you're, if you're here, you're a member now. If you support me, that's great. You'll get a little bit more out of this. Uh, and it doesn't cost very much. So I really appreciate it, but let's dive in. This is the Q3 update. Let's scroll down a bit here. Let's look at some details. See operating cash flow, less CapEx, free cash flow was 3.38, 3.3 billion in Q3. So one of the things we're gonna be looking for, we're gonna see this in the in the chart soon, is what's free cash flow looking like. I'm expecting this number to really be bigger, number to be bigger, but we'll see. $2.2 billion increase in cash and marketable securities to $21.1 billion. This is Tesla's cash pile. Tesla had over 21.1, had $21.1 billion in cash at the end of Q3. With free cash flow coming in, we should expect this number to grow. Uh, profitability, they had $3.7 billion gap operating income, 17.2% operating margin in Q3. $3.3 billion gap net income, $3.7 billion uh, non-gap net income in Q3, excluding shit stockholder-based compensation and 27.9% automotive gross margins in Q3. So what we're, we're looking at di diminishing margins in the future, and there was some reduction in pricing towards the end of Q4, but the vast majority of vehicles were sold before any significant price drops. I'm expecting margins to stay reasonably high in Q4 and to drop in Q1. It's possible margins will actually go up significantly because as Texas and Berlin ramp, then we should see their costs per vehicle going down, their production is going up. So the overall margins, gross margins on vehicles and so on should be going up. As mega pack ramps at Lathrop, I'm expecting that cost of goods sold per unit to go down, the margins in mega pack to go up, not to the fantastic 50% or 80% that zero sum game 33 has been talking about and JP Sartre has been talking about. Long run, I think mega pack margins may get close to 50%, but right now they're not there. So I think we're gonna see an increase in margins overall, both in automotive gross margins here, operating margin here. And I think we might see more net income. Um, and then we'll talk about earnings per share in, in a minute. Record energy storage deployments of 2.1 gigawatt hours in Q3. Lathrop is ramping. I'm expecting this number to go up. We're going to see this in the chart. Initiated transition to smoother delivery and production mix. So that, I don't think we've seen a big change yet in Q4 to the smoothing of delivery and production, but we'll see. There's a summary here. The third quarter was another strong quarter with record revenue. The deliveries went up substantially. The number of vehicles that were delivered to customers went up substantially from Q in Q4 versus Q3. So revenue should be another record and significantly so. Um, record operating profit, operating and free cash flow. Again, I think those numbers are going up. I think there's some Wall Street estimates when it comes to earnings per share that are suggesting it's going to be less than Q3. I don't understand how earnings per share in Q4 would be less than Q3, but I guess we'll find out. Industry leading operating margin when counting material headwinds, raw material cost inflation impacted our profitability. Now, we're hearing that raw material cost inflation has ended and some costs are, are de diminishing. I'm not sure if that's going to show up in Q4. My impression from what Zach Kirkhorn said in the Q3 investor call, that's what we have coming up in a couple of days for Q4, that they didn't expect that to translate into cost of goods sold because there's a lag, like the materials come in, you produce the vehicle, you sell it, that takes more than a quarter, might take more than two quarters. And so it, there's a lag between when costs start coming down and when they start showing up in the reports. Along with ramp inefficiencies from, from Giga Berlin and Giga Texas and 4680 cell production, those have all ramped significantly, so the inefficiencies are less. There are still inefficiencies, there's still amortization over a smaller number of product. 
So that should improve. Also, the U.S. dollar continue to strengthen compared to all other major currencies in our markets. I think that's still true. I haven't followed the dollar, but I think that's still true. Additionally, as on indicated page one, reaching such significant delivery volumes that transportation capacity is becoming expensive and difficult to secure. As a result, again, this transition to a smoother delivery pace, leading to more vehicles in transit at the end of quarter. We expect that smoothing outbound logistics will improve costs per vehicle. So we should see again, lower cost per vehicle as they do this. So there's a number of things that are lowering cost per vehicle, lowest cost per goods sold should increase gross margins. Again, in Q1, we're gonna see the, the big price cuts having an impact, but in Q4, we don't see that yet. Because again, there was, I think it was the last two weeks of Q4 that we saw some price cuts or some discounts offered, but that was, that was a small number of vehicles for the quarter compared to what we're gonna see in Q1. Remain focused on increasing vehicle production as quickly as possible. A lot of people have been in denial about this. Troy Teslike, huge fan. I'm a huge fan of Troy Teslike. I'm a Patreon supporter of Troy Teslike. Troy, in the past, has doubted increasing production. He suggested the demand isn't there. Elon said, we're going to increase production. That's it. If, if, if prices have to suffer, prices have to suffer. This was said in the Q3 report, increasing vehicle production as quickly as possible not depending on demand, not depending on pricing, not depending on margins, increase by increasing our weekly build rate in Fremont and Shanghai. So they're still, as of Q3, they were still growing in Fremont and Shanghai production and progressing steadily through the production ramps in Berlin and Texas. Logistics volatility and supply chain bottlenecks remain immediate challenges, although improving. So that's another issue is have the supply chain bottlenecks gotten better? My impression is everything is a lot better. And this should be this should be much better. So we'll see if they mention this in the next report. We continue to believe that battery supply chain constraints will be the main limiting factor to EV market growth in the medium and long term. So we expect to continue to deliver every vehicle produced while maintaining strong operating margins. Does that change? Do they expect to have to have a, a significant impact on strong operating margins? Um, are do they still feel battery supply chain constraints are the main limiting factor in the medium? Notice they didn't say the short term. So I don't expect that battery that battery supply is going to be a problem for Q4. I don't expect it to be a problem for Q1 either. Somewhere out in the next two, three years, because my impression is that they have sufficient battery supply for about through the end of 23 and maybe well into 24. It's when you get into 2024 that you start seeing problems. But I think Tesla is better placed than anybody else to deal with that. So this is the financial summary page. This is the page that Wall Street cares about a lot. And let me just check to see if there's any comments in the chat. Didn't Elon say material prices were coming down? Yes, uh, Elon did say that. Zach Kirkon, I think, said that in the Q3 investor call, but it takes a quarter or two for the material prices to translate into the, the materials come in and it takes time to convert those materials into a vehicle or mega pack or whatever, and then get that delivered to a customer to where you get the revenue in and you don't count the costs until you get the revenue. That's how cost of goods sold works. It's not cost of goods, it's cost of goods sold. So you don't count the cost until you sell the goods. I hope that makes sense. And we've got automotive revenue. We had 12 billion, we had 16 billion, we had 16.7 billion, we had 14.6 billion, Q2 was the Shanghai lockdown. And then we had 18.7 billion. So I'm expecting this number to be substantially higher because there's a lot number, a much higher number of vehicles sold, should be over $20 billion in automotive revenue. 